there, Designaholic. I'm Carrie Lawless, and we are Designaholics. On this channel, we teach DIY hacks, how to achieve high-end looks on a budget, and how to make the most money through staging when you sell your home. We are about to get started on this wall behind me, and we are going to make a beautiful textured metallic finish. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. to do a finish. You want to get your tape very straight and if you tear off a piece and you put a piece next to it, make sure it lines up exactly. You won't notice how ugly it looks till you tear off the tape. So I'd say it, but be pretty perfect. Also, you want to burnish the tape down and all that means is you're going to take your fingernail or a little tool and just press the tape down so nothing slides underneath and gets on your crown molding or the other wall next to it. So they're taking that off right now and we're gonna get started as soon as they're done. Now, here is what we're doing. I always do a sample board. Honestly, even if I'm just doing a solid color paint, always a sample board because you can't tell on something this big what it's gonna look like on your wall. So uh, actually for solid colors, I usually do like a big poster board, a regular size. All right, getting started now. Here's what we're using. We are using Modern Masters Shimmer Stone, and this just comes in a base, and you have to tin it. The way I'm tinning this product is with metallic paint. You can use any brand, really doesn't matter. The idea is though, in a gallon of this, you can see we've accidentally got some mixed in. This is what it really looks like though. It's just a white shimmery base. So in a gallon, you aren't gonna mix more than four ounces of paint. This is a two ounce bottle. So if you're using Folk Art or any of these kinds of brands uh, that come in these bottles, use no more than two of them. I've got approximately half a gallon here, so I'm just gonna start out with this and see what we get. Um, I'm using Antique Gold, and then I'm also gonna use just the base. We're gonna use just those two colors and we'll show you how we trial them on to get that shimmery finish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just mix. You really wanna make sure you get all the way down to the bottom because it's gonna be an issue if your color changes as you use the product. So make sure you scrape all the way down and get the color really consistent. This stuff is super thick, so it takes a little elbow grease, but you just have to make sure it's even. We're getting ready to start. We're using two colors. We're using the original base, which Natalia is mixing up. That is thick stuff, huh? Yes. Show them the texture. Yeah. That is crazy thick. Now mine is mixed with paint. I was gonna say it's not as thick, but actually I think it actually is. It's still super thick, maybe a little less than the base. And as it turns out, um, I did what they suggest not to do and I oversaturated the paint. This was the amount of paint that was supposed to go in this whole gallon. I put this amount in about two thirds of a gallon. However, I did it on the sample board. It turned out great. I just needed the color to be really saturated. The other thing is when we mix this on the wall with the base, um, it's going to change the ratio of paint to product anyway. So I started, I just needed this amount of saturation to start out with and mine's already mixed. Natalia just opened that one. So she's gonna go ahead and get that one mixed up. We're gonna have a container of each and then we're gonna get started on the wall. We have the molding and the sidewalls all taped off. Now we're getting ready to get started. So I have the original color here and I have the one that we tinted right here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply both colors side by side in a kind of random fashion. I'm skip trialing this on to start with and then I'm just gonna move it around and see what I need to do to, to accomplish the finish that I want. I mean, I know the look in my head. 
so I'm just gonna go a bit random with the application. This is called skip troweling. So when you see, I'm, I'm using, by the way, I'm using a Bondo spreader. This you can get at an automotive supply or um, even an auto parts store. And I like, I think this is a six inch, but this is the size that I like the best. Um, it's easy enough to control, but it's, you know, but it's not too small either. So I'm basically just, I would say like at a 30 degree angle or something similar, I'm lightly applying so that it skips. It's called skip troweling, and that's where you get those little holes in there. I don't want it to look stripy. I want it to appear random. So I'm just applying patches. Um, some of it's gonna be a little bit solid, but I'm just, you see the degree that I'm using, and I'm just going very lightly so that I don't flatten it all out. It's also not the same thickness everywhere. Some places are thicker than others. Because you want this to look natural and random when it's all done. Also, one of the things I see in faux painting is people don't get all the way up to the ceiling. This line across here and the sidewalls are really, really important to creating a professional finished look. You want to get that trowel or bondo spreader all the way up there. So now, where I have a section applied, I'm gonna go ahead and just, where the two colors are next to each other, I'm gonna pick it up and basically skip trowel on, like in the middle, and then each color onto each other. Not so that it's over blended. I'm just picking up the light, putting it over the dark, and vice versa. If some of the sections of the original wall aren't completely covered, that's okay too, because those are just gonna add a little bit of dimension. I'm gonna try and cover the majority of it because it is flat, and I don't want big giant flat sections, but it's really not that critical if you miss some. One of the mistakes I see people making in a faux finish is they get too close and they never step down and get a wider perspective. That's gonna be super important because when you're looking at a space this big, that's not how the person that's walking into the room is gonna view it. They're gonna view it from behind, far back, and that's the most important view. So you need to step back every now and again and get a wide perspective of the wall. All right, now the other thing you wanna do is take your sample that you've perfected and hold it up to the wall and see where you need to adjust. Typically, it's not gonna be right on the first go around until you hold it up and adjust. All right, we're gonna do that now. One of the things to keep in mind is that this um, is completely dry and this is completely wet, and so they're gonna look a bit different. All right, now one of the things I'm noticing is on here, I'm having a heavier texture, which I don't know, it actually looks pretty good to me. We can leave it that way or we can flatten it out a little more like this. It just depends. And um, in this case, we are doing this for someone, so we would defer to the homeowner to see what their preference would be. We would just hold them both up. So um, we're just gonna keep going and figure out which direction is gonna be best for this space. All right, I got off the ladder, stepped back, looked at it, and it's definitely too much contrast between these two areas. We took a look at it with the sample and um, this is much heavier and the colors are not near as blended. I think we may like the heaviness, definitely blended a little bit more. So we're gonna try that and then reassess the heaviness. So you just wanna get a small section, get it perfected and go from there. Here's the other thing too, as I'm blending and I'm picking up the lighter color, not the white white, but the lighter color, I'm blending it on top and giving even more dimension to this area. The other thing I really like is to have flat sections, bigger sections with texture pulled on top because that's where you really get your depth and your dimension. So the last color I used here was the dark. I'm gonna go with the light next to it. I'm gonna apply it, and I'm gonna pick some up, apply it onto the other color, blend a little bit, not over blend, 
and then it's called skip troweling. Skip trowel it back onto the wall, which basically means I'm holding this at about a 30 degree angle and I'm just lightly dragging. So that is skip troweling. Again, I'm seeing a lot of contrast in this one area. So I'm just picking up a little dark, blending it with the light, picking up a little light, blending it back into the dark. And this is what makes it look not so solid. We're gonna step off this ladder in a minute and just reassess. All right, ladies, what we wanna do is make sure that this sample, as far as, the, I know the texture's heavy, but we wanna make sure that the colors are like, the, you know, the same. So I'm gonna hold it right up and I wanna get some opinions. Here. It looks pretty close, look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all think it's close? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's close. All right, I think it's perfect. Yes, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good with everything in the room too. Yeah. All right, good deal. We're gonna keep on going. We have homeowner approval in this case, which is great. And we all, as a designaholic crew, think it looks really good. So we're gonna keep going and um, just keep applying. It's really important when you're doing a skip trial finish, what we're trying to do is incorporate the color that's on the wall. So it's super important not to trowel over every square inch because that's good, that color that's on the wall is different than the two colors I'm applying. That's given us our third color. So you don't want to cover it completely. One of the things I like to do as well, I wanted to point out is on my edges, I've always liked doing the darker colors. I feel like it frames it out and gives it a more finished look. Obviously you don't want a solid line all the way across, but if you can keep from getting like a solid light area, that usually helps it to look more finished. To start off with, I am applying, I would say like a two foot by two foot section or two by three or something like that. You don't want to go too far. And then what I'm gonna do is blend this section into the one that I've already got on the wall. I'm gonna add a little light here because I've got a big dark section. The look we're going for here. You see I'm picking up light, putting it into the dark, picking up dark, skipping it onto the light. And then, and then also picking them both back up and skipping them together. Variations. So she's gonna let me know if from a distance if it matches. What do you think? It does. Yeah? Yes, it looks really good. All right, good deal. Yes, pretty so cool. we're just gonna keep going. Now we've got a big section. We can keep comparing to this, which makes it a whole lot easier than this. <laughs> until you see what this looks like when you pull the tape away. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite part. Watch. Ooh, love this. Oh, I love how it just pulls together. The colors are so perfect together. Okay, look, I need to tell you this little trick though, because if you do this, there's a way to pull tape and a way not to. The way you do it, Pull up the corner and you want to go on a 45 degree angle away from the wall. Anything else could mess it up and cause your finish here to tear. There we go. Oh my gosh, so subdued, so serene. Love these colors together. 
Ta-da! There it is. So, what do you think? We're done. It came together so beautifully. Don't you think, Natalia? I love it. I love the color. I love it so much, too. So we had so many different shades of gold and champagne and all these different things, and it brought it all together, all in one wall. Everything is cohesive. Everything is beautiful. And it's just enough shimmer to make it amazing, huh? Fancy. This is such a fancy room. We love it. So anyway, please like, comment, subscribe. We want to know what projects you're doing. We want to know if you think this would look beautiful in your room. Also, links for the product are below. This is Shimmerstone by Modern Masters. We think it's amazing. And um, also, if you need any help, just put that in the comments below too. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. And um, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>